Hi, this is Craig Severance from the Zero Energy Channel. Come join us as we work to address the challenge of moving toward a world with zero energy from fossil fuels. Hi, this is Craig Severance with the Zero Energy Channel, sitting in the, what's going to be the living room of our passive solar tiny house. Behind me is one of our large south-facing windows that will provide a lot of heat to the tiny house in the wintertime. If you want to be able to dress like this and be relaxed in your own living room, the sun pouring into your structure and feeling very nice and warm and toasty without turning on any heat or starting a fire for a good portion of the time, you want to do passive solar. The sun is powerful, a one square meter of, of a south facing window will bring in about the equivalent of heat on a nice sunny day in the winter of about a, a, a blow dryer running. So the more square meters you have, imagine several blow dryers running all at once here, that's the sun heating the house. The solar principles have been around since at least the 1970s and thousands of years before then uh, people were using the sun, uh, taking advantage of the sun's position in the sky. If you're going to use solar for heating your house, you think about having a south wall and a north wall and an east and west wall. So when you park at your tiny house, you just make sure you park it pointing in the right direction. you have to think about is insulation. You have to have good insulation. Watch our insulation video of uh, how we use this material. Three inches of ISO, ISO scenery. You can usually get from building supply and roofing supply places but not from the lumber yards. And it has a high R value per inch. This is three inches, has R18. And we've added a foil bar barrier to increase the effectiveness of that even further. So you have to keep the heat loss down. Then of course, if I have most of my south side and windows, we probably have about half of our square footage of our south side of windows. But sitting here in the winter, I'll be not only able to wear my nice Hawaiian shirt on a zero degree day outside, but it gets too hot in here. And uh, so you have to have some kind of mass uh, to store the heater. All you did was create a big solar oven to cook yourself in. Uh, you can always uh, crack a window if it's too hot. But you want to try to store that for the evening hours, and uh, you, that requires what they call thermal mass. The best is water. It's also really good for a tiny house because you can drain water off when you need to move it. And we're going to have some water stored in the, in the four joists uh, underneath the loss. It's an unused space in most tiny houses that will store some heat. And then we are also putting in tile in our tiny house and uh, you can use uh, uh, something like a porcelain tile product or what with a cement board to have more mass in the house and then just watch your weight calculations. Found out we could add about 3,000 pounds here of weight storage for thermal mass because we have a pretty hefty trailer. So uh, that can be done. How can you use tile in something that goes down the road, all the, all the grout's going to crack? Well, we've done it before with an RV that we had. Every tile store sells the caulk type of sand and grout. It comes in caulk tubes. That, and all the different colors of sand and grout come in caulk tubes also in a flexible form. So just use that uh, instead of the, the mortar type of, of grout and you'll have much better luck if it not cracking to pieces over you when you go down the road because it's going to stay flexible. The, you 
you're not going to want to have the sun coming in in the summer, of course, and overheating you. You can see in our location here, it's one of the simplest solutions. So locate yourself under shady deciduous trees that drop their leaves in the winter. Or you know, for our mountain location, when we, when we go there, it's, there are no summers. But if you have some real s summer issues, uh, the, uh, and you can't find a shady location, you're going to have to create shade your own. And a tiny house, that does become a problem because the standard solution to that would be to have a pretty good overhang that will let the w w winter sun in because it comes in real low. But when you have the sun high in the summer, that overhang uh, will, like a, a long eave, would block it. But having the long eaves sticking out from the side of the tiny house is going to probably get you beyond your width restrictions for highway use. So those are some tips. And, and in fact, any tiny house, even if you don't want to add the weight, like if you're going to really be one of those tiny house people that actually does move it quite a bit, you may not want to add the thermal lamp. You can heat at least all day long on a sunny day if you follow all the other principles. And just if it gets too hot in there, crack a window. You won't be able to store it without the heat, without the weight. But every tiny house that has south facing windows and you park it the right way, you can use massive solar heat in a tiny house. And let me know when you sit in your living room dressed like this on a zero degree map. Hello, my name is Eric. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up down below. Also, if you want to subscribe, that's good too. Join us on the Zero Energy channel.